Hello again, internet every peoples, and welcome back to another episode of Poly Plays Labyrinth of Toho 2. Last time we got ourselves nice and intimate with the inner workings of Gensokyo, and today we're going to be doing a little more learning. You know, I apologize that the front of this LP is so front loaded with information, but I kind of want you guys to understand the game. That you're watching and not just looking at everything and be able to like <laughs> pretty colors uh so let's go ahead and get into things and let's let's learn some more let's have a look at our main menu the most exciting part of any lp i've heard and let's go ahead and check out our status screen here we have all of the basic info you'll need to understand the overall how well your characters are doing. We've got their equipment, we got a status, we got a resist, and we've got a whole bunch of other stuff. But let's go ahead and go top to bottom. Equip is obviously what we have equipped. And the numbers here will reflect that. Here we have status. We went over a lot of this yesterday, but I'll go ahead and explain it a little more in detail. Hit points and magic points are pretty easy to understand. TP we will explain once we are in the dungeon. Attack and magic are your basic attack uh, statistics. Like uh, all of your actions kind of work off of those. Uh, or, you know, or sometimes it works off of both of them at once, which we'll go over uh, in a bit. Speed is how quickly your character will get their turn. Since this game uses an active time battle system, this is a very important stat. Keep that in mind. Defense and Mind, they work exactly the opposite of your attack and magic stats. One is for physical defense, one is for magic defense. And then we've got our resistances, which we went over yesterday. And then we have status ailments. Uh, these are an important part of any RPG, and they work against and for you. So you can have them inflicted on you, and you can inflict them on the enemy. The numbers are important in that usually it's about 120 to completely resist any uh, status ailment. You can only really reach that by having equipment. Um, and if a character is just naturally weak, it's kind of hard to get those resistances up. But let's go ahead and go over what these are. We've got poison, which drains 1 HP per tick of your ATB gauge. Needless to say, poison will rip you apart, but it will also rip enemies apart in just a matter of time. Very important, very dangerous. We have heavy. This is a status effect that will not let that character be pulled off of the front line. So while you're in battle, you can form change and pop characters in and out as you please. But if they have the heavy status, they cannot be moved out of combat. That is bad. Uh, we have Terror, in which a character, after they take a turn in battle, they will lose MP. And then, of course, we've got our good pal Death, Instant Death. Lots of things like Instant Death, you want to have some good old high death resistance. Especially, well, I don't know, maybe early in the game, we will see. Uh, we've got Paralysis, which prevents your character from moving at all. We've got Shock which halves your character's current ATB gauge. So if you're at 2500 ATB, you drop down to 1250. Uh, it can be real annoying. It's like one of the first statuses the game starts throwing at you. Silence, you can't use spell cards. That's a bummer. And debuff resistance, where you can't have, you know, like the higher this is, the better chance you have of not having your statuses, your, your stats brought down uh, by uh, stat debilitating um, uh, techniques. We have HP recovery rate. This is in percentage the amount of HP a character will gain per turn when they're on the back row. So if they're not out fighting, every turn they get while they're on the back row, they will gain 12% of their HP back. That would be for Reimu at least. MP recovery rate. Times this by two, and that is how much uh, MP you will regain from using the concentrate command, which we will go over in battle, and uh, how much uh, magic points they will recover um, while they're on the, uh, the, the, the back row. Uh, so let's move over here. These are the skills. We will be going over these in just a few moments, but you can kind of just get an overview from the status screen. This is a more detailed look at your character's status and get pretty 
graphical bars there. Everybody loves those. Um, and we see here we've got uh, some more stats to take care of. We've got level up bonuses given. So like after every level up, you get one point to spend. This tells you where those are. Uh, and we've got base value increasing items. Think of them as like HP, MP tabs or strength tabs from Chrono Trigger or something where you get a permanent stat boost. And that's really cool. Battle points. Battle points are, you, you get them from just being in battle and doing stuff. And they're important because a lot of events, especially events that require recruiting characters, involve battle points. So a character will sometimes have to have a lot of battle points accrued in order to trigger certain events in the dungeon. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. The level up bonuses stock and the skill points stock are the uh, points that you have accrued but have not spent yet. And training manuals are special items that we will go over once we start using them. Uh, we've got our equip menu. We have no equipment right now, but you can equip one main equipment and three sub equipments. Uh, I don't think that they're necessarily divided up into just like weapons. They're just main equip, sub equip um, items. We've got main equips, sub equips, materials, which we will go over later. And we have special items, which include things like your treasure chest key, which we got last episode. Uh, but they also are for important, like, items that grant you permanent um, uh, stat raising abilities for the entire party for the duration of the game once you collect them. And you'll, uh, we'll be seeing some of those probably early on. The game's not too stingy with handing out a lot of really cool shit uh, for a, a relatively small amount of work. We have formation change, which is kind of the main mechanic of the Labyrinth games of how you uh, work with your party in and out of battle. As you can see, we've got 12 character slots. We've got four on the front row. These are the four that will be in battle when a battle starts, and these eight slots are your reserves. We can switch to them freely, do whatever we want with them. Characters can be anywhere we want them to be, but for now, we'll just leave them where they are. So skills. Skills are probably Along with your base stats, the most important part of really maintaining your party and uh, managing them well. Um, you spend skill points, obviously. I mean, looking at the screen, it's not hard to see, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in two chunks. We've got the top half, which this is more HP boost, MP boost, and you can see that there is some grade out here that this character cannot have, but if we go over, it's like, oh, well, you can have those. Why can you have those? And then... You know, like certain characters can actually, you know, certain characters just have access to certain skills from the start, um, and others don't. But at later points in the game, we will be able to open up these slots should we wish to. Usually, won't have to. Uh, the option's just there to kind of supplement your characters as best you can. But you spend points here, like you do in Patchouli's library, to just make your characters better. Below that, we have character specific skills that we will be uh, going over. I'll go over these more in detail when they matter, which was usually before a boss fight. That's usually when you're kind of playing around with your skills more than ever is when you're trying to puzzle out a boss fight. Um, so I won't go over all of these for all of the characters when they're acquired uh, or, you know, in this video when I'm going over our uh, four main characters yet. Uh, a, a, a minus one character, we will be going over theirs because those are kind of important. So, um, and beyond that, you can rest in the dungeon. This will let you gain magic points at the expense of TP, which again, that will be uh, gone over in detail a little more once we are inside the dungeon. But for now, let's have a look at our four characters, see what makes them tick, and, um, uh, and how they're going to measure up for the entirety of the game. Again, these are just my assessments. If you've got better assessments, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm more than happy to hear about how full of shit I am and how wrong I'm playing the game. So we start with Ramu Hakure. She is the main character of the series, and obviously she is a really good character. She is the flying mysterious shrine maiden. Uh, she is, as you might expect, a really good healer and a really good buffer. She's good at maintaining the party through even just late game fights. I think both times I played this game through, she was always in my final party. Like, I, it's hard to think of a party she does not fit in 
unless it's a party that's just dedicated to straight out offense, which she's just not that great at, uh, which is to be expected, but she has some of the best like support and healing in the game, and it just makes no sense to not have her as part of the party, but let's go over her four spell cards. We have Yin Yang Orb. This is two magic points. It is a single enemy spirit attack, and it is a composite direct attack. So composite means that the damage formula for this spell card uses both her attack and magic stats versus an enemy's, uh, I believe it's mind. I would have to look up the actual formula. I think it might actually be against a both though. Um, that's something I'll, I'll I'll remember to do next time we get a new character and I go over their shit is to know uh, what how their formulas are a little bit. So this is a spiritual power. Um, flies out of the orbs to attack an enemy. This leveling up this skill will add a paralysis effect. That's really important. And that's another cool thing that you can actually uh, get uh, to each character's spell cards is sometimes when you level them up with skill points they um, actually gain supplemental abilities. Also, you start with three skill points uh, at level one. Another thing I forgot to mention. Um, so yeah, like even though like Raymu may not be the best at dealing a lot of damage, things that aren't just immensely weak to spirit, throwing paralysis on a troublesome enemy, you cannot overlook like the, the value in that. Uh, then we have Fantasy Seal. This is Remu's signature spell. It's a strong composite spell that targets all enemies. Again, it's spirit composite magic. And this is a spirit direct. Okay, okay, I think I see what's going on. Direct, I think composite direct means that it attacks their uh, physical and uh, composite magic. It uh, goes to their mind. Again, I could be completely wrong there. Um, but now for the two spells that make Remu kind of like it defined her role in this game this is the exercising border it is an eight magic point all heal spell it recovers hp for all members on the front line mp efficiency for the amount of hp healed is low but multi-target healing spell is always invaluable she's gonna get pretty good mp growth throughout the whole game uh so yeah it's still a little expensive but exercising border is gonna be a go-to heal no matter what uh, and we've got the Great Hawkeray Barrier. This is seven magic points, all allies, and this is a defense and mind buff. And is uh, for all members on the front line. And the more you level this up, the more, uh, the, the higher percentage uh, of, of a buff that will be. I think it initially starts at 10 or 20, and then like for every skill point you put into it, it gets five or 10 beyond that. Uh, and it can be leveled up five times. So that can be a pretty damn powerful buff by the end of the game. Um, uh, and that's Reimu. Overall, again, she's just super solid. There's no reason to not have her unless you just have a different strategy that I didn't think of. Marissa, she is an ordinary black magician. Uh, as you would expect, she is your squishy black mage type. And um, she is a damage dealer. And the unfortunate part is that, as you will see, all of her attacks are based on the mystic element. So even though she can throw a shit ton of damage out in a short amount of time, if an enemy has even a slight resistance to Mystic, she is going to be gimped in a way that is it, it's pretty hardcore. Uh, it can mess her up pretty bad. So we've got Magic Missile. This is a Mystic spell that targets a single enemy. It's just a basic spell. This is kind of your single shot, working your way through the dungeon kind of thing. Um, can be good for bosses, definitely. It's it's definitely MP efficient as well. Um, and she's got Asteroid Belt, which is a mystic spell that targets all enemies. Again, like it's just a it, it, it's a mystic nuke, plain and simple. She's very she's a very easy character to wrap your head around. We have her signature Master Spark. This thing costs a whopping 27 MP that we don't even have right now. Um, this attacks all enemies with a super powerful mystic attack. It consumes all of her MP no matter what the amount is, and the more MP is consumed, the more damage this spell will deal. This thing's gonna get you out of a lot of the hairy situations, trust me. Uh, you're gonna be thanking your lucky stars for Master Spark once you get the ability to use it and just lay into bosses. But again, if that boss resists mystic, even slightly, the damage is going to tank. Uh, and finally, she says Concentration. 
This increases the caster's magic. It's best used before launching a strong spell, obviously. So basically the idea with Marissa, especially during boss fights, is to kind of get her in, get people throwing buffs at her, get her to concentrate, get her out, and then bring her in when it is viable to throw off a Master Spark and get the fuck out. Uh, she is not going to be able to put up with many uh, attacks that, you know, at all. Um, magic or physical. Like, she might have a decent mind stat, but it's not going to carry her like some other characters are going to be able to tank magic. Um, moving on, we've got Reno Stay. He is an unmoving, he's good seller. We're going to go over his stats a bit more here. Uh, his skills, rather. Uh, as you can see, he has MP high boost. Like, all of his, like, in relation to everybody else, like, they got MP boost, HP boost. His are high. And this is to compensate for the fact that he's kind of not a great character. Um, he is a support character through and through. None of, like, he has no uh, attacks at all. Nothing he does is an attack. So, he is going to be there to just back up everybody. And, um... Uh, let's see, let's move down to the skills that kind of matter most to him. So, uh, effective formation change. This is when, uh, when he performs a form change, which is to swap a character from the back line to the front line, that character's ATB bar will be set to 7,500 plus the skill level times 800. That's pretty crazy. Um, and this thing, I believe, goes to three levels? I'm not sure, I can't remember. Uh, but your ATB max is at 10,000, and that's when you get a turn. So he can switch people in already and get them faster turns. Um, and that's kind of his thing. Um, and he's uh, attack debuff and magic debuff. When he's in the front, when he's on the front line, and he gets a turn, enemies just get natural debuffs from it, uh, and that can be very useful. Um, never underestimate the, like, like if, especially if a boss is, uh, very weak to de- uh, or very strong to debuffs and you can't stick them, he can at least be helpful in that regard, but he's not gonna be able to stay in and, like, be a tank or anything. Maybe a decent second or third slaughter, but he's not gonna be your tank and he's not gonna be taking the damage. He's got a very weak first aid skill, uh, this thing is pretty bad unless you start leveling it up because it can start removing uh, more status ailments. Right now it only removes it only removes terror and poison, which like those are pretty good. You'll want to have those off, but it really only heals at most like maybe 20 HP at the moment. Um, and battle command. This is this raises all the stats of an ally. Um, and it's a pretty decent buff, but there are going to be characters that can kind of do that way better later. We're going to be playing a whole kind of different game with buffs uh, as it relates to like boss battles and stuff later and he's not going to be able to keep up. He's probably not going to be in my party that long. I never was able to find much good use for him. And finally we move to Kaine. Uh, this is another character that I kind of never really found good use for beyond her uh, third and fourth uh, spell cards, but we'll go ahead and uh, go over uh, these real quick. We've got Ancient Mystery, Old History, uh, or Ancient History, Old History. Uh, this is a special, uh, this is a special spell that uses the caster's magic attack against the enemy's normal defense. So there are certain attacks like that in the game that where it might use magic, but it attacks defense or vice versa. And this can also be true of bosses, and it's something you need to be very careful of. Um, but this is good against uh, enemies that are weak to dark, obviously, but it also can bypass their mind stat if they have a high mind stat. Uh, then we've got new history. Next history, this is a spiritual nuke that targets all enemies. It's, again, very, very basic. Uh, and now we have the two spells that kind of make her worth it to me, uh, really. I think, I've, I think she was in one of my end game parties uh, the two times I played this game. So we've got Three Treasures Sword. This increases the attack and magic of all frontliners. And this decreases the defense and mind of all frontliners. Uh, uh, the Three Treasures Sword and Mirror. Like, these are just really valuable. And they're pretty valuable early on. Uh, just because sticking buffs on all of your allies is pretty important. Um, but beyond that, I never really found much good use for her. She might be able to nuke decently with... Uh, 
uh, with Ancient History, Old History, but, uh, you know, it might be something to play around with this playthrough. I just know that I never got a whole lot of use out of her. But again, hey, in the comments, you can tell me I'm wrong if you want. So, with all that out of the way, let's say we go ahead, have a look at this goddamn first floor great tree thing. So now we go. Welcome to the I'm not gonna read text. You know, that's the kind of thing that I probably should have thought about a little bit before deciding to do kind of an RPG. Is that, oh wait, you gotta read stuff. And I don't want to read stuff because I hate reading out loud. Boy, <laughs> won't make that mistake again. Uh, but basically, they're just kind of amazed that this place kind of looks normal inside, except for the fact that it's, you know, inside a tree. And, you know, there's a forest inside a tree. You can't see the forest through the trees. Huh? Huh? No? No? All right. So, don't worry. I got more to teach you. Like I said, we're front-loading it. So... What we got here is we've got our Reimu avatar, and the top right we got a mini map. On the bottom there we've got our character status, and I'm gonna do something about that right now. Hold on, I need to make a quick form change here because this is not a good form. We don't have a good uh, tank yet, so Kaine is just gonna have to do the job as best she can. So. Basically, all you do in this game is kind of go around the map, and you you move, and you unlock circles, and you just gotta, you gotta keep opening them circles. I open more of them circles. It's like a bag of Doritos. <laughs> like, you know. It's like, it's like them cubes in Crimson... Or it's like them cubes in Mars Matrix. Go play Mars Matrix. <laughs> Boy, I, I couldn't have botched that reference anymore if I tried. So... Here we have a battle, and in battle, characters go uh, and get a turn when their ATB gauge hits 10,000. Uh, and, and like sometimes a lot of characters hit 10,000 at once, and I don't know what the game does about that. Uh, I just assume that it gives it to like whatever is in its data first uh, gets the priority. So we've got attack. Attack works differently in this game in that it can actually be useful. In, in, in the first game, attacking was kind of pointless after 4-1. And it was even useless on 4-1 because the damage formula was such garbage. Uh, but the, uh, they tried to like alleviate that a little bit this time by changing how the damula, damage formula works based on your stats. So if your highest attack stat is your physical attack, it uses that versus the enemy's defense to determine the damage done. If your highest attack stat is magic, the attack is then mystic based and goes against the enemy's mind. That's a much better option. Like you're not gonna be using it a lot still, but it's now a lot more viable in actually taking out enemies. Spell cards, obviously we've got access to all the character spell cards. These are the only spell cards you're getting. Characters don't learn extra spell cards unless they learn different spells from other means, but that's gonna be a while. We're not gonna be seeing that. Form change. This lets us put people in and out of the party. In Labyrinth of Toho 1, this actually costs TP, which is a bad thing. And you had to be really judgmental about when you wanted to pull characters in and out of battle. Uh, but now it's a free action. Uh, well, not a free action in that you, your character gets to move, but basically once your character moves someone out, like, there's no real, like, penalty for it. And Concentrate lets you recover a little MP. Uh, and again, that's based on your MP recovery stat times two. Uh, escape, you're guaranteed escape from any battle. Easy as that. Uh, but it drains three MP uh, from everybody on the front line, which that's a bummer. And um, if you haven't guessed, TP is important. We'll probably hear about why TP is important after we kind of just fight this small Kidama here and beat his dumb little face off. Look at that. We're just beating on a poor little hairball. And that's it. And there we have our results screen. 
a uh, couple of more things to point out here is, or you'll see they're grayed out now, but once we get in another battle, they won't be. We've got consecutive battles, total battle experience bonus, total money bonus, and, to and battle spoils drop bonus. Those go up per consecutive battle you're in by 2% a piece, I think? It might be 2-1-1, I don't remember. We'll, we're we're going to find out very shortly, though. So that's the quick and dirty battle explanation that will be going on here. Uh, so, yep, that was our first battle. It's not too bad if you're careful. <clears throat> and Rinosuke's not wrong. He's kind of useless for the most part. Boy, how do people do this? How do people keep doing RPGs and, and not end up sounding like a nanny. So we've got our first tool tip here in that all HP that was lost in battle will be recovered after it if a character was downed in the battle. It will come back to the party with their HP fully recovered. That's good. However, for characters that recovered HP after being defeated, a large amount of TP will be consumed to bring them back. Down characters will lose 10 TP. That is a fucking ass load and characters will lose one to five tp depending on the hp left so usually it's something like uh you lose like uh zero to ten percent you only lose one uh tp if it's like 30 to 50 you lose two and uh beyond that you lose three up to and then the 10 for falling in battle tp acts as motivation for characters if a character's tp go down to zero they will be demoralized and return to gensokyo by themselves by reducing the amount of damage taken you can reduce the amount of tp consumed it's one way to extend your exploration so that's kind of like the big deal of exploring in this game is managing tp and like uh it, it can be a little problematic if if uh battles drag on too long you usually don't want random battles dragging on all that long if you can afford it. That's usually why they're referred to as kind of like sweeping encounters. Oh boy, here's a uh, nut eater. Go ahead. Get it out of your system. I'll wait. Alright. Good job. So, I, I kind of hope that I've, I've, I've explained things well enough. I know that this kind of had to be long-winded, but I really wanted you to kind of understand a lot of what this game's doing as it's being played, so that you can see, like, that it's kind of, like, there's a lot of cool systems at play, and they're, they're really, really cool. Uh, so, these red exclamation marks, these are event markers, and uh, when these appear, like, you just walk into them, and an event happens, some kind of tunnel, like, look at that, a tunnel, and like, when we go through here, boom, we're back where we started. So, they can be anything from little things like that to, like, oh, well, here's another one. Look, it's on the other side of that grove over there. What is that? It's a, it's a, a black blob with pretty purple. What's well, there? Oh, it's Rumia, Yokai that can manip manipulate darkness. She collects the darkness around and forms a bubble of darkness around her, but it seems to blind her as well. That's kind of a bummer of a power to have. Oh, somebody, look at her, isn't she? She's adorable. She bumped her head. Can't see. Oh, come back. Oh, okay. She went somewhere else. That was predictable. Oh, okay. See you, Rubia. Hopefully. Uh, we might see her again sometime. I don't I doubt it. Why would we ever see her again? That event was probably just there, you know, for just to be random. Okay, we obtained a main equipment. A cypress stick. So that could be equipped in our main slot. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Here's a very quick mini map button uh, that'll help you see the entire floor it can be moved around and stuff uh, that'll be way more important as floors get bigger but for now our auto map should be enough I hit the wrong button again so uh, what does the cypress stick do a cypress rod that isn't very thick it's not very reliable as a blunt weapon but having a weapon at all gives people courage and a way to fight back against those trying to intimidate them 
Okay. Uh, a lot of the items in the uh, Labyrinth of Toho 1 and 2 are references to, like, a lot of obscure RPGs. Uh, I'm gonna throw that on Marissa for now. Uh, there are, like, a lot of weird references to RPGs and other shooter games uh, and the like. Uh, let's go ahead and throw out ancient history, old history. Didn't finish the job, but we should be able to finish it off with a couple of standard attacks. Boom, boom, boom. And we got Mad Milk! What is Mad Milk? What in the world is Mad Milk? Is it an equipment? <laughs> Mad Milk is an equipment. That is HP plus 24%. That's a pretty damn good drop for floor one. We'll go ahead and throw that on Kaine for now, since she's kind of acting as our go-to tank. Um, let's see, I think I want to kind of stick up and around maybe to the west for a while. Maybe there is a reason. I want to maybe continue my way west. Maybe there's maybe there's some good stuff. So we have our first real troublesome enemy on the first on the first floor here, and uh, the Kuran Nut. These guys are super fucking tanky, and they hit really hard, and they inflict shock, and they kind of resist freaking everything we have right now. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get rid of the small Kadamas while I can, and we'll drop a fantasy seal here to see what we can do. And Marissa, you got a good shot at finishing this? No, of course no. And Rinosuke, you're gonna do fucking nothing. Yeah, physical attacks are not gonna cut it, but we'll go ahead for, uh, to, to kind of save on our MP a bit. Uh, let Marissa go ahead and handle the rest of that for us. Okay, well, uh, let's continue doing all of these little circles down here. I don't know what that event could be up there, but we're going to go down here. We're going to pick up a steadfast ring. A slim fast ring. I don't know. Let's see. What have we got? A steadfast ring. This is a ring that decreases knockback from damage. The game has an excellent system that offers good customization and collecting fun, but it's not president, president, it, president, oh man, talking. It's not present in other titles. Oh, quite a shame. So this resists sh uh, shock, uh, that adds 50 shock resistance, and since a lot of enemies on this floor use shock, good idea to throw that on our current kind of tank. Uh, but let's go ahead and get in another battle. Another very big, dangerous battle that I'm not fond of at all, but, um, you know, let's see here. Yeah, that Koron nut is going to be a problem. I don't think anything else here is going to be a problem, though, so let's go ahead and throw out that again, see what we can do. Throw a fantasy seal. Yeah, I think we're going to make it out of this just fine. Kind of might get donged pretty hard here. Nope, it's going to be Renosuke. We don't really care about Renosuke, though, so he can get donged in the face all he wants. All right, you know what? Like that, that's a kind of an example of an early fight that can be a bit of a problem. We got another Mad Milk from Battle Spoils? That's fantastic. I will take it that. I'm not sure how rare of a drop Mad Milk is. But that seems like a pretty good drop rate um, for a first floor item. Uh, and for an item that gives you uh, HP. But let's go ahead and pop up here. Oh my. Who could... Oh, we're at... We, a Tengu? I know of a few Tengus. Oh, I know that girl from before. What was her name again? Oh, where did that Tengu go? Oh! It's my girl. Mamiji Ina Bashiri. Mamiji's awesome. And I will hear nothing otherwise. So she's kind of hanging out in this big old tree. That's awesome. Hey, I have a great idea, Mamiji. It would be a good idea if you joined my party. You look like you're you look like you're more equipped to handle whatever may be hopping out here than we are. You got a big ass fucking shield. You got a sword, and you got a poof ball right on your chest. Just boom. And you got your, your little Tingu hat with poofy balls on it, too. <laughs> so, how's this gonna go down? Yeah, like, I'm, yeah, I'm with Marissa. Explore this place with it. Oh. 
Oh, you're not turning me down. You can't turn me down. Oh, you, you see, like, Rainbow's not wrong. Those dirty ass Crow Tingu, you never know what they're gonna do. Besides, you know, the Crow Tingu only care about getting news before the other Crow Tingu. Y'all see? Right. See? see? Look at Marissa. She's straight up being racist right now. <laughs> Those dirty ass Crow Tingus. What are you gonna do with them? Uh. Yeah, see? Momi, you, you, you're with me on this, right? All right! This is sweet! Momiji Inabashiri joined the effing party. Hell goddamn yes, she did! But she's not going to immediately join the party. She actually runs back to the human village, which, uh, in order to get back there, we've got to go back to, uh, Gensokyo. Uh, let's have a little peek around to see if there's anything else we need to do here. We've still got some TP left. We've got a few MP left to play around with. Uh, so that could probably nab us a few extra experience points if we need to. You probably need to concentrate. And you, Fantasy Seal. You will Magic Missile. You will stand there with your dick in your hand, I guess. Uh, and Magic Missile again. Alright, that's probably gonna about the armored parasite what is that what is an armored parasite i do wonder is it's not a main equip it, oh well that is another oh, a defense plus 24 percent okay it sounds like they're getting ready to set us up to have us a nice hearty tank on our hands let's see here we go you know let's 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 chance one more we'll, we'll chance one more before we head on back and uh call it an episode uh figure you can't get enough of this exciting combat uh while we're out here just dicking around and there's all these just bubbles of intrigue hanging around here so uh that i'll probably save for next episode but, oh lord this is gonna go real bad nope all right see you later don't like that forest fairy but as you can see, this gives me a good uh, opportunity to demonstrate, like, Ramu's TP became zero, she left the current exploration party, and uh, there's no way to regain TP in the dungeon, so when you leave dungeon, like, that's it, you can just pop on out, and we're gonna get a cutscene the first time to kind of probably tutorialize this just a little more. And it's just basically telling you, hey, you might want to take it easy on your MP. Um, it'll get easier to manage once we get a fuller party, though. So let's go ahead and start winding things down here. Yeah, like, you know, a little more protection. Yeah, sure, dude. Yeah, we're going to be relying... Okay, so... The target for an enemy's attack during combat is largely influenced by the position of the group on the front line. In short, enemies are inclined to attack the leftmost character. Physical enemies especially show this tendency. Thus, characters with high HP and defenses should be put at the utmost left, while fragile characters to the right. This, is, this reduces the chance of them being killed by normal enemies. Controlling who the enemy attacks is very important in battle. Make sure your front line is well organized at all times. It's absolutely vital. And even more cutscenes that I've got to talk over. My party's getting bigger. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so it's going to tell us that, you know, like, you can use form battle. Uh, or you can use the formation change and you can go to the human village. Um to go swap out party members uh, and all of that fun stuff, which you know, we'll probably handle that a little later. You know, hey, you don't want to put this over. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. And, and on top of all that, we got an achievement in recognition of our, in our achievement. The following is rewarded. So let's go ahead and have a look at the best, the bestiary. That's why, of course, now you can see here. Uh, once you fight an enemy, all of its stuff is just here. You don't even have to beat it, do you? 
No, you don't even have to beat it, I guess. Well, no, I guess you do. Okay, I thought the uh, Forest Fairy was in there. Um, but as you can see, you can, like, see the resistances now. You can see the item drops. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, Mad Milk is only a 1.2% drop. And I got two of those right off the bat. Damn, talk about luck. Maybe that's, like, good like, like good vibes for the, for, for the you know, for the... For, for, for the playthrough going forward. So let's have a look at our achievement. Yep, like, like I said... The adjacent achievements light up, so I can now see like what the name is here. But like the one that we got is walking. You may finally get, you may finally get to the next town. Like you just walk a total of 200 steps in the dungeon, and we got an energy gem for that. Let's find out what an energy gem is. I believe that is a special item. Yes, this is an item that increases a character's maximum TP when used when used at the Hakurei Shrine. Up to 10 may be used per character. Uh, I think that's just 10 energy gems per character. That might not be, like, in total. I'll have to look that up. Or somebody can just tell me I'm wrong. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Poly Plays. Labyrinth of Toho 2. Um... Thankfully, we're out of the front-loaded information stuff, and we're actually in the dungeon now. So, next time, we're gonna beat stuff up! And we got a puppy. <laughs>